Hi, I'm Charles with Anicap. This is my recap for the anime Buchigiri. If you like my recaps, please consider subscribing. The story begins as some spineless and cowardly nerd named Ara practices talking to girls in a mirror. Elsewhere, some guys wake up in a shrine after a long night of drinking, but become terrified when something begins to shake. One of these losers thinks it might be the legend of what they call a Honkai person being sealed there, but they don't stick around to find out when they hear a growling noise. A Honkai person is defined as one who finds a heart that doesn't flee. In the Age of Samurai, fighters who threw away their sword and put down their helmet emerged. These fighters fought to reach the top with nothing but their Honkai, so they are known as Honkai people. Ara arrives at his first day at school, where he is told that the Minato Kai and Shiguma squad compete against each other for the top spot. This is clearly demonstrated outside as two students fight it out. It's clear that Ara couldn't be less interested in all the fighting, and he only wants to know if there are any cuties in his class. The instructor inappropriately assures him that there are, but Ara quickly finds out that his class is actually filled with some dangerous looking guys. Everyone in this dirty, messed up classroom is pretty disinterested in Ara when he introduces himself, but Ara is amazed to see that there is one girl that he likes. She is so perfect to him that he compares her to a gentle quail egg in the chaos of a bowl of stir fry. This girl quickly introduces herself as Maharo, and Ara instantly falls in love with her. Outside, the guy named Marakara beats up his opponent and wins the fight. When class finally ends, Maharo surprisingly asks Ara if he would like to walk home together. Our boy of course accepts without hesitation, so Mahiro tells him that she will wait by the gate. Ara has prepared his entire life for this very moment, so he rushes off in the manliest way possible. Some green-headed dude trips him though, and his buddy joins in to intimidate Ara. Ara uses the oldest trick in the book to get away, but he quickly runs into the stone wall that is Matakara. The other bullies close in on him, so Ara realizes that he's about to get beat up. Just then, Matakara surprisingly already knows Ara's name, but Ara doesn't recognize him. Ara thinks real hard about his name, even though his stomach is beginning to hurt, and eventually remembers that they were close friends when they were younger. Ara seemed to be like an older brother to Matakara, and Matakara couldn't be happier to see him after 5 years. Matakara tells his goons that Ara is his old buddy, and they used to train together to become Honkai people. He explains that Ara was always really strong, but the goons don't see it. Matakara wants him to hang out with them, but Ara doesn't seem to share the enthusiasm for meeting again and leaves. Ara thinks that he has some seriously bad luck for seeing Matakara again. He rushes off to meet with his future wife, but unfortunately she is long gone. The dweebs from earlier eat at the restaurant Ara lives in, and he tells his nosy mom that he met a nice quail egg. Ara takes over the kitchen for a while and overhears the guys talking about what might have been sealed in the shrine. At the Shiguma base, the guy that Matakara beat up apologizes to his squad's leader for losing. This guy explains that Matakara was surprisingly a nice guy, and the leader makes a joke about him falling in love. The leader quickly stops all the laughing with a kick to this guy's face, and this guy with a bunch of piercings just continues to enjoy his meal. At night, Ara thinks about his past with Matakara and how he once just watched his old friend get bullied. The next day, the poor teacher tries to teach this group of hoodlums, and Ara wonders where his crush is. At lunch, he prepares to eat his heartfelt meal, and is shocked to find Maharo there. Maharo explains that she is skipping class, and Ara apologizes for not meeting with her the day before. She doesn't care at all, and awkwardly asks if they could become friends. Of course, Ara jumps at the opportunity, and this really forward girl asks him to hang out on Saturday. Matakara calls out to him from below, and his green-headed buddy wonders if Ara is really that strong. Matakara explains that Ara is strong, brave, and cool, and he really admires him. This green dude is clearly jealous and doesn't understand at all. Goldilocks notices that Ara is talking to Maharo, so he determines that he needs to urgently tell Matakara about this, but Greenhead stops him. He thinks things would be more interesting this way, and they should just let their school's tradition play out. At some shop, Ara gets excited to have picked out the perfect stone to carve, but the bullies surprisingly arrive and take him to an arcade. Greenhead wants them to get along from now on, but Ara's stomach begins to hurt again. Broccoli Hair sees that trouble has arrived, so he gets his ponytailed friend out of there. Ara wins his game, but some dudes in white notice that Ara isn't part of the Minato or Shiguma gangs. Ara points out that he would never take part in stuff like that, but that proves to be the wrong answer. These guys can't believe that he would just walk in the arcade so comfortably without being part of a gang and point out to him that this is their turf. 
Ara tries to get away, but the guys stop him as he is their 100th catch. Ara does manage to get away, albeit without most of his clothes, but the guys continue to chase him as they want to rob him of everything. His so-called new friends have a good laugh, and Greenhead realizes that he was right and Ara isn't tough at all. With few places to run, Ara finds himself taking shelter inside the shrine. As the bullies try to break in, Ara knocks over one of the sealed boxes and a mysterious gun pops out. The bullies eventually barge in, so Ara takes the gun to threaten them with. These guys laugh at the old broken down gun and approach him anyway. Ara fires the mysterious gun, but it ricochets all over the place and the bullet just ends up hitting him in the head. The bullies think he is a goner, so they get out of there, but Ara eventually wakes up. The bullet seems to be lodged in his head and a strange mist comes out of it. Just then, a small tornado forms and a magical being called a Majin appears before Ara. This Majin's name is Senya and he offers to grant Ara a wish. Ara is too terrified to even say a single word, so Senya quickly determines that he is some kind of wimp. Senya wonders if this is just another miss, but asks Ara again for his wish. Ara finally begins to understand what's happening, and Senya assumes that the boy will want wealth, honor, or power. Ara hardly needs any time to think about it, and instantly wishes to develop plot with the girl for the first time. Senya surprisingly understands why a young boy like him would wish for this, and offers to merge with Ara in order to make it happen. Ara leaves as he doesn't want to merge with anything, and quickly learns that no one else can see Senya. Back to the goons, they tell Madakara about Ara's pathetic display of his cowardice. Madakara knocks out a few pull-ups, while he explains that Ara's a gentle guy, and he hates fighting. Back at Ara's house, Senya complains about the stupid plot of some soap opera. Ara does some research and wonders if Senya could just be his imagination. Sometime later, Ara carves the stone he bought to make it into a gift for Maharo. Senya offers some advice on giving a better gift, but Ara explains that this stone will protect her for eternity. It's a love forever stone and it will be the key to her heart, but Senya has no clue what this delusional kid is talking about. On Saturday, Ara tries to figure out why the bullet is still stuck in his head, but his caretaker doesn't seem to care about that at all and just wants to know if he's going on a date. Ara gets real embarrassed, but this crazy lady just tells him to focus on getting as far as he can with the girl. As Ara waits for Maharo, he tells Senya not to talk to him as his entire life is on the line. Maharo arrives and wonders who he was talking to, but Ara explains that he was just mumbling to himself. The two quietly enjoy some ice cream, but Senya reminds our boy to give her the stone thing. Ara strangely tells him to shut up, so he has to tell Maharo that it was nothing. Maharo somehow isn't put off by Ara's strange behavior and is instead really glad that he came to the school. Senya thinks this is the perfect opportunity for our boy to make his move since if he doesn't do it now, he never will. Senya demands that he not chicken out, so Ara proclaims that he will show Senya how it's done. Maharo hears some pretty strange noises coming from Ara and it's because his stomach is going out of control. Ara tries to tell her it's nothing even though he's clearly getting sick and runs off to handle business. Once Ara finally finishes up, he reveals to Senya that this happens to him every single time. Ara shamefully returns to Maharo, but she is still somehow into Ara and is just glad that he came back in time. Ara finally finds the courage to give her the stone he made and she stares at how her name is carved poorly. Ara slowly declares how much he likes her, but he is interrupted by a gang. Their leader strolls up on some kind of machine and he has such bad posture that he can't even see where he is going. He has his right hand man to tell him when to stop and he is so lazy that he must be kept from falling. This guy manages to talk all on his own though and reveals that he is the leader of the Shiguma squad named Marido. Ara tries to get out of there with Maharo as quickly as possible but Marido's vein pops out of his head. Maharo notices this and shockingly asks Ara to fight for her. Marido has gotten very serious however and furious that Ara has dared to put his hands on his little sister. Up above, Greenhead has called Madakara to meet with him and reveals that Ara is in big trouble. He wonders if Ara will make it out alive and Madakara rushes off angrily to help his old friend. Down below, Ara takes a beating. Marido wants a fight but Ara has already determined that his life will now end as this guy is going to finish him. Marido continues to beat down on him and demands that Ara get up. Something is seriously wrong with Maharo as she admires her cool brother for losing his cool. Senya watches this beat down and listens as the gang points out that this will be Marido's 35th victim. Senya is disappointed to not have found what he was looking for once again. 
This is because even if he merged with Ara, he is certain that he would never be able to meet a certain person. Senya begins to leave but is shocked when Ara wonders if everyone really thinks that he's just going to let his life end this way. Ara finally shows some determination to live just as Marido is about to land a devastating blow. Senya becomes extremely excited and demands that Ara say what it is that he truly wishes for. Ara prepares to say what he wants and we see that Madakara is rushing to him. Ara finally gets up and surprisingly still wishes that he developed plot with a girl for the first time. However, this time Ara's body erupts with power and Senya announces Buchigiri. Ara shockingly stops Marido's kick and as he prepares a counterattack, it becomes clear that he has merged with Senya. Ara's bicep becomes so huge that it bursts from his shirt and he lands a devastating punch on Marido. Ara absolutely destroys Marido just in time for Madakara to see, and Madakara thinks Ara looked just like a Honkai person. Ara has no clue what just happened, and the bargain basement genie is furious that Ara keeps wishing to develop plot. Ara was just being honest with his wish, but Senya points out that he's supposed to be wishing to get stronger. Their argument is broken up by Marido, who sends Ara flying into a lake. Madakara bumps into some guy named Jabashiri while rushing to Ara, and this Jabashiri guy acts like Madakara just became his worst enemy because of it. The crowd breaks up when they hear sirens, and Marido stares at the imprint on his stomach left behind by Ara's insanely powerful punch. This guy seems to be angry, but in reality he just proclaims that he's going to get Ara into the Shiguma gang. Afterwards, Ara wakes up from a nightmare and Madakara praises him for the amazing punch he landed on Marido. Ara's brain eventually catches up with everything and he just wants to know where Mahiro went. Madakara assumes she went home and Ara determines that beating her brother must have been a bad idea. Broccoli Head spots a Saguma member spying on them from outside and chases after him. Madakara shows Ara the best friend stone Ara gave him a long time ago. Ara had told him that whenever he held it, it would make him stronger. Madakara doubts Ara still has his, but our boy isn't even listening. Madakara stops him from leaving and wonders if Ara started avoiding him because he wasn't strong enough. Ara says that it was so long ago that he doesn't even remember and just leaves. Senya appears wanting to fight everyone and tells Ara not to be sad since even though he lost today, he can still win tomorrow. Ara is quick to correct him by saying that he actually won against Marido, but Senya doesn't see it that way. Senya overhears some guys talking about a fight that's going on, and our fight hungry genie drags Ara to go see it. They're too late when they arrive though, and Greenhead wonders what Ara is doing there. This dude accidentally touches the bullet lodged in Ara's head, and he's shocked by Senya. At home, Ara thinks about how in that one split second, he felt a ton of power surge through his body. It was like he was an entirely different person, and he wonders what Senya even is. Senya explains that he is a true Honkai person, or at the very least, the closest a man can get. The unimpressed Ara points out that Honkai people are just legends, even though there's a literal genie talking to him right now, and Senya points out that once they merged, Ara was able to throw a massive punch. However, he could only manage to throw one punch because they were only partially merged. Senya notices a mark on Ara's back, but doesn't say anything about it. Instead, he just informs Ara that he won't get any stronger unless they are one in body and soul. Senya wants them to be practically joined at the hip, but just the thought of that makes Ara want to puke. Senya points out the need for a man to merge, and our boy Ara knows that feeling all too well. At the Shiguma base, the guy named Jabashiri arrives to speak with their leader, Marido. The first year student is told that he's way out of his league, but Marido wants to hear what the kid has to say. Jabashiri snacks on a meatball sub offered up by Marido and explains that the pink haired guy named Tat followed Madakara after the fight. Madakara is from the Minato gang and he took Ara into his home. Jabashiri doesn't think they should recruit somebody like Ara who seems to be involved with someone from Minato, but this just makes Marido consider recruiting Madakara as well. Jabashiri gets so angry that he bashes his head into a wall and he reminds Marido that he will be his only successor. On his way to school, Ara finds that everyone is stunned to see that he was the one that punched Marido. Senya is impressed with how popular Ara is now, but Ara couldn't care less about being popular with all the guys since it doesn't do anything to get him closer to developing plot. Senya wants to fight anyone for just looking at Ara funny, but Ara yells at him. This startles the crowd who seems terrified of him, and Marido appears out of nowhere. Elsewhere, Greenhead tells Madakara that he should avoid Ara from now on since he seems to have some kind of monkey on his back. 
Madakara actually reveals that he's planning to ask Ara to join Minato Kai, but his boys don't think their leader would ever allow that. Madakara reveals that Ken already wants to meet with Ara, and Zabu can't understand what Madakara sees in that kid. Madakara thinks that Ara's fist looked just like a Honkai person's, but Zabu just wonders why his friend takes the old fairy tale so seriously. Later at school, Marito rides up on his llama to ask Madakara if he knows where Ara is, and he reveals that he plans to recruit Ara to Shiguma. In class, Ara yells at Senya for annoying him as always, and must apologize to everyone who surely must think he is crazy by now. It's clear that Ara still has a crush on Maharo, but Senya reminds this simp that she had her brother beat him up. Ara's head is really in the clouds as he corrects Senya and explains that Marita was just testing his sister's new boyfriend. Senya is quick to point out that Ara started to run away at the first sight of Marito, but Ara explains that his legs just moved on their own. Just then, Marito's voice calls out to Ara, and Ara's legs move on their own again to get Ara out of there. Elsewhere, Maharo tells her brother that she wants to be with him always. She wonders if he is even listening, but we see that this psychotic girl is actually just talking to a bear version of Marito. Ara arrives, pretending like seeing her there was a complete coincidence, and he apologizes for what happened the day before. Even though Ara just ran from Marito, he tells Maharo that he wants to face off against her brother one more time to earn his respect. Ara thinks this will impress her, but Maharo shockingly explains that if he hurts her brother again, then she will end his life. Maharo tells him to take back the rock he gave her, but he explains that it's a love forever stone. She doesn't care though and just drops it. It shatters into a million pieces, and this jerk acts like it was an accident. Afterwards, Maharo asks her brother to walk home with her, but he's having a fight dream against Ara, and he punches his sister right in the face. This chick seriously has some screws loose in her brain, as she blames Ara for this. At home, Ara depressingly pieces together his sad-looking Love Forever stone. Senya tries to cheer him up, but the kid is hopeless. The next day, Madakara invites Ara to join Minato Kai. He explains how impressed he was with his punch on Marito, but he's interrupted by Jabashiri. Zabu is furious to see the pink haired dude, but Jabashiri uses his favorite weapon to attack him. Ara wishes this whole thing would just blow over, but that doesn't seem to be the case as Madakara goes to confront Jabashiri. Jabashiri has business with Ara, but Madakara states that he will have to go through him first. This actually works out perfectly for Jabashiri though, as he explains that he has been waiting to slaughter Madakara for some time now. The two step outside, giving Ara immense relief, but Jabashiri tells him that he will be back for him. Outside, the two prepare to fight, and everyone cheers for battle. Senya tries to drag Ara to go watch, but he doesn't want to get mixed up in all that. Senya questions our boy's manhood, and he wonders if he's really just planning to leave his friend behind. This comment seems to affect Ara in more ways than one, as his stomach gargles and he must rush off to take care of business. The fight finally begins, and Madakar is amazed by Jabashiri's flexibility as he dodges all of his kicks. Just when Madakar thinks he will finally land one, Jabashiri simply dodges again. The crowd is extremely entertained, but Senya is left frustrated as he has to wait for our boy. The fight continues as both guys seem evenly matched. Madakara clearly leans heavily on his kicks to attack, but Jabashiri more than holds his own. Madakara gets excited when he finally manages to land a kick right on the back of Jabashiri's head, but Jabashiri just uses the opportunity to knock Madakara down. Madakara just manages to stop him from landing a devastating blow, but Jabashiri prepares to use his trusty headbutt to end the fight. Madakara doesn't even try to avoid it and decides to literally take it head on with a headbutt of his own. Their two heads collide, and the crowd goes silent in anticipation of what will happen next. The invisible Senya drags Ara to the fight just in time to see that Madakara had the more powerful headbutt. Jabashiri is out cold, and the crowd erupts with cheers. Senya is furious to have missed what seems to have been an awesome fight, and Ara just wonders what's wrong with Madakara. Madakara isn't moving an inch, and we see that it's because he's unconscious. When Madakara wakes up, he points out that Jabashiri's head is as hard as a rock. Ara compliments his old friend by saying that he didn't do so bad, but Madakara points out that it was nothing compared to Ara landing a punch on Marito. Before Ara can leave, Madakara asks him one more time to join Minato Kai. Madakara explains that he has gotten stronger, so he really thinks that they have a real shot at becoming Honkai people together now. Ara remains silent and Sunny is shocked that these two kids were actually training to become Honkai people. Ara makes his decision and reminds Madakara that he is done with all that stuff. 
Madakara makes one last effort to convince Ara to meet with their leader Ken, and explains that Ken is taking on Marito for the top spot. This proves to be the key to motivating our boy Ara, as he is intrigued by Ken wanting to fight Mahiro's brother. Ara goes to meet with Ken, and Senya is glad to learn that Ara wants Gentle becoming a Honkai person and taking the top spot. Madakara reveals that Ken was held back three times, so he is a bit older than them, and Ara is shocked to hear that he is 21 years old. The giant Ken finally arrives, and Ara thinks about how he is like an old man. This guy has an intense presence, and Senya is amazed by how strong he seems. Madakara begins formally introducing Ara to Ken, but Ara just gets right to the point, and he tells Ken that he wants to go one round with him. Senya couldn't be happier to see this side of Ara, and Ara thinks about his thought process. If he can beat an old guy who's on the same level as Mahiro's brother, then he won't have to hurt her brother to show her how strong he is. Ara gives himself a good pat on the back as he's some kind of simp genius. Everyone prepares to watch Ara fight Ken, but they all think the kid is just crazy. Madakara pleads with Ken not to do this, but it's too late. Ara tells Senya that it's time, and Senya is just glad that Ara has finally discovered his true wish. Senya assumes that he finally wants to wish for more power, but Ara once again wishes to develop some plot for the first time. Immense power flows through his body once again, and Senya proclaims Bujigiri. Ara's arm grows twice the size again, tearing his sleeve to pieces, and he lands an immense punch that sends Ken flying. Everyone is of course stunned, and Madakara realizes that Ara really is the one. Our boy Ara strikes a victory pose, but Senya's just upset that all Ara thinks about is developing plot. Ara doesn't think there's anything more important, but Senya points out that getting stronger is. Ara looks like a lunatic as he fights with the invisible Senya, and the furious Ken sends him flying through the ceiling. Ara looks like he might not be alive anymore, and Ken just stares at the huge indentation that Ara's punch left behind. The other Minato Kai members blame Madakara for bringing trouble, and they become terrified when it seems like Ken is becoming enraged. It turns out that he is actually laughing, and Ken writes that he couldn't be happier. At school, Ara is still feeling the repercussions of the fight, but Senya just wants to go another round with that guy. Ara gets real cocky after winning two fights in a row, and points out how it's like he has no limits. Senya quickly brings him back to reality though, as he points out that he technically lost again. Just then, Marito's voice can be heard approaching. In typical Ara fashion, he prepares to jump out the window again, but Marito is one step ahead as he comes crashing through said window. Marito has finally caught him, and he asks Ara to join their team. Ara tries to explain that he would only be a burden if he joined, and he would respectfully like to decline. However, his simp brain takes over as Mahiro signals that she would love for him to join. She speaks to Ara's simp heart without a single word, and he agrees to join Shiguma. Just then, Madakara arrives. He's excited to reveal that Ken has agreed to let Ara join Minato Kai, but he is of course shocked to see him talking to Marito. Marito tells him that he's too late, and Ara has already chosen to join Shiguma. Madakara tries to remind Ara that they were supposed to become Honkai people together, but Marito reiterates that he just joined Shiguma. If Madakara wants Ara to join his group, then he will have to take him by force. Elsewhere, the dudes in white are terrified since they don't have enough money to meet their quota, and their leader knocked three teeth out of the last guy who failed him. The one they call their emperor explains that Marito's trying to take on the head of Minato Kai, and he decides to find a way to make them settle it. He thinks that's a great idea, and his subordinates wonder who this crazy guy is talking to. We learn that the Minato Kai and Iki Union once fought the deadliest, most famous battle for the top spot at Ichuzu High. Then, the 43rd leader of Minato Kai named Domin absolutely destroyed Iki Union's boss with one blow. Just when Iki Union's fate seemed to be sealed, Marito appeared. With Marito as the leader, Iki Union was rebranded as Shiguma Squad, and it immediately regained its former glory. This explanation is given by Tatsu, and he is enthusiastic about Shiguma's plans to take the top spot. Senya is on board, but Ara is completely disinterested. He joined for all the wrong reasons, and would rather not waste his youth fighting. Marito arrives to take him somewhere, but when Ara wonders where they are going, he is met by a real ugly face from Jabashiri. Marito receives a call as all preparations are ready, and Jabashiri tells Ara not to let the situation go to his head. Marito reveals that they are going to Ara's welcoming party, and they will be spoiling him with debauchery. Ara thinks about what kind of debauchery, but he reveals that he is the type that can only share his heart with one girl. 
Just then, they find some guys in white robbing some poor kid as they desperately need to reach their quota. Marito breaks it up and Ara recognizes them as the ones who robbed him. They are the NG boys and their group's leader is Shindo, a guy who was exiled from Minato Kai. The NG boys pull out some weapons and Ara realizes how serious this is as those blades could end someone's life. The guys fear that they have no other choice since their emperor will take their lives if they don't do as he says. Marito instantly takes these fools out and tells them to send a message to Shindo. The message is to not get too carried away. Seni is amazed by Marito and Jabashiri points out that that wasn't even the tiniest bit of his strength. Elsewhere, Mahiro calls her brother and invites him to some places but eventually realizes that she was just leaving a message. Madakara tries to talk to her about Ara, but she doesn't even acknowledge his existence. Madakara grabs her and tells her that he won't let go until she talks to him. Mahiro gets real serious to tell him to take his dirty hands off of her, but he can't hear her. Mahiro makes him hear her with a crazy loud scream and she runs off while calling him a gross blockhead. At Ara's welcoming party, Marito tells everyone that Ara has a powerful punch, but Ara just wonders where all the girls are. Marito then announces the start of their welcoming party tradition game called Look That Away. The winner will get a one year supply of Hot Pockets. Marito has everyone party up and the crazy game starts. Ara is stunned as this crazy game seems to just be rock paper scissors with a violent twist. Senya points out that the debauchery he spoke of is actually depunchery. Marito declares that everyone that turned must sit and he wonders if Ara has figured out the rules. It's very simple as long as they don't lose at rock paper scissors. The game continues and these dudes just keep punching each other in the face. Eventually there are only a couple guys left standing and Marito wonders if Ara is ready to give it a try. Ara would rather just observe but Marito wants him to show off his crazy strong punch. Ara is up and Marito can't wait to face off against him in the final round. Ara tells Senya to merge with him but Senya refuses. He would like to help, but he doesn't think Ara would really be satisfied if he only won because of him. Jabashiri is glad to finally get his shot at taking out Ara, but a guy named Oda wants to go first. Everyone whispers about this guy because he is the leader of the special attack unit and Ara is really unlucky to have to go against him. Ara wonders if this is the end of his life and he begins to regret joining Shiguma. Senya finally agrees to help, but Oda wonders who Ara is talking to. Tatsu arrives to be the referee and Ara realizes that if he doesn't win at rock paper scissors, Oda will probably kill him with his punch. Tatsu begins the match but the first match is a tie. Ara loses the second one though so he tells Senya that he is counting on him. Ara is terrified as Oda prepares his attack but Senya makes Ara take the punch right to the face. Oda's hand is injured causing him to pull back and everyone wonders what kind of crazy strong skull Ara has. This is the first time anyone other than Marito has taken a punch from Oda. The force of Oda's punch can even smash concrete, so everyone is left in awe as they wonder how Ara's skull could be strong enough to withstand it. Ara is announced the winner and Senya celebrates Buchigiri style. Oda tells Tatsu that he will be going to the restroom and we see that his fist is all messed up. Jabashiri is next up and he has been waiting for this very moment. Ara doesn't think his skull can take any more but the match is already about to begin. Tatsu starts the match and Ara manages to win. He doesn't even want to win though so he decides to throw a weak punch. Jabashiri thinks about how Ara can't really be that strong but he is surprised by the strange look on his face. Ara turns out to just be looking at some girls and ends up landing the weakest looking punch. Tatsu is completely stunned though and points out that Ara just used a legendary technique. One of the seven deadly blows passed on by an ancient Chinese fighter. When a fighter releases all the energy in their body, the attack uses centrifugal force to strike sharply with all the momentum of a heavy whip. With a strange turn of bad luck, Tatsu announces that Ara is the winner and Marito quickly arrives to face him. Seni is hyped about it so Ara tells him to quiet down and apologizes when Marito thinks he was talking to him. This gets Marito even more ready to fight and Ara realizes that his life will now end. Ara doesn't think his skull will survive but Senya tells our boy not to give up. Marito then explains why he has taken a liking to Ara and it's because he was able to feel his honkai when he punched him. Tatsu starts the match and the super intense Marito prepares to show rock paper or scissors. However just then Ara's stomach starts acting up and he's allowed to go handle it. 
Unfortunately, when he arrives at the bathroom, he finds an unconscious Oda. Morito is furious and demands that the person who did this reveal themselves. A Minato Kai sleeve was found next to Oda, so the others want to get revenge. However, Morita knows that this isn't Domen's style. Jabashiri is sure that one of the Minato Kai did it, but Morito points out that some nobody from that gang wouldn't be able to do this much damage to Oda. Afterwards, Tatu explains the history between Oda and Morito. When they first met in middle school, they started calling themselves the God Kings, and they always fought side by side. They are war buddies, and the only person in all of Honkai City who can defeat Oda is Domen. However, Morito knows better than anyone that Domen wouldn't pull shady stuff like what happened to Oda. Morito now has a decision to make. Does he avenge his comrade, or trust that his arch rival wouldn't do something like this? Senya admires their close friendship, but Ara doesn't want to hear about it. Afterwards, Ara finds Mahiro at his house restaurant, and his mom is doing her best to eavesdrop without being noticed. Mahiro thanks him for joining Shiguma for her, and Ara explains that his head got smacked real bad because of it. He considers quitting, but this crazy chick smacks him right across the face. Mahiro points out that things haven't even started yet, and she is sure that her brother is going to ask Ara to take over for him and Shiguma. Mahiro wants him to defeat her brother, and tells him to do it for her. This little succubus does her heart move, which once again pierces our boy's soul, but Senya doesn't think it's anything special. As Mahiro leaves, Ara yells with determination that he will go for it, and his mom just wonders how far he got with the girl. Mahiro thinks about how once Morito graduates from Shiguma, all his attention will go to her. That night, Ara does some serious shadow boxing and wonders how he can get his merge rate up with Senya. Senya is surprised by this kind of talk, but Ara explains that he has to become Morito's successor. In order to do that, they will have to merge. Senya couldn't be happier since Ara is turning into a fine man. Senya has our boy play the flute, but Ara wonders if it's really going to improve their merge rate. Senya explains that they are harmonizing, and he notices that the strange symbol on Ara's back is becoming more defined. Ara wonders what incentive Senya has for merging, but he just says that it's natural instinct. Elsewhere, Jabashiri runs into some Minato Kai guys, and Tatsu reminds him that it will be trouble if they take them down now. Jabashiri listens to his friend, even though he is clearly enraged, but the Minato Kai guys call them spineless. The triggered Jabashiri confronts them about ambushing Oda and starts beating them up when they act clueless. Tatsu manages to pull him away, but Jabashiri vows to get vengeance for Oda. These Minato guys have the worst luck since once Jabashiri leaves, the NG guys arrive to take them out. Their leader seems very pleased with himself as he is plotting something devious. The next day, during a sad excuse for gym class, students are told to pair up and stretch. Ara pairs up with Madakara, so he gets his back cracked, and Madakara reminds him that they always used to be partners in elementary school. Ara has another memory from their pleasant childhood, but something else is clearly bothering him, and he tells Madakara that he doesn't remember. Ara does his best to crack Madakara's back, and Madakara wonders what Mahiro told him. Ara explains that she told him that he has to become Morito's successor, but he collapses under the weight of his much bigger friend. Just then, Madakara is informed that the Shiguma took out two of their guys from Minato Kai. Madakara arrives to find that his fellow Minato members have been tied to trees. Greenhead is furious as he is certain that the Shiguma are the only ones who would do this, and he refuses to let them get away with it. A trio of Minato members find some Shiguma guys and instantly begin a fight, and we see that the real culprits watch from a distance. Afterwards, Morito and the other Shiguma arrive to find that the Minato have beaten up their boys. Morito finds a picture of him in Oda, and it states that Morito is next. At the Minato Kai base, Madakara explains to Domen that their two members that were tied to the trees had to be taken to the hospital as their ribs were broken. Just then, the guards can be heard getting beat up, and Morito arrives. Morito explains that he has a debt to repay, and demands that Domen show himself. Domen hears him loud and clear, so he appears to confront Morito. Morito instantly attacks, but Madakara stops him. Morito sends him flying, and Madakara just asks that he tell them what the problem is. Jabashiri thinks they should already know, but Brocklyhead points out that they were the ones that ganged up on their guys. Jabashiri tells them what they did, but no one really knows what's going on. Things get even more tense, but Madakara tells his boys to calm down. Morito shows them the armband that they found, but Madakara explains that no one from Minato Kai would do something so cowardly. 
Marito is still skeptical, so he says that if it wasn't them, then they need to bring the real culprits to the Coliseum tomorrow. If they don't, then Marito will declare war. Marito tells Domin that they will settle things once and for all, and leaves. The tense moment ends, but the real trouble is just about to begin. At school, Seni is glad to see that Ara is taking his training seriously. Of course, Ara thinks about Maharo and promises to defeat her brother for her. However, Ara remembers how she threatened to end his life if he hurt her brother. This means Ara must defeat Marito, but he can't leave a mark on his face. Ara doesn't think it makes much sense, but Senya reminds him that he could just punch the guy right in his gut. Ara goes right back to shadow boxing as he ignores everyone and eventually arrives at the Shiguma base. The others don't share his enthusiasm and Tatsu catches our boy up on the war. Everyone is getting riled up to destroy Minato Kai, but Tatsu knows that it will only be a battle without honor or humanity. Revenge will only lead to more revenge and they will try to wash blood away with more blood. Ara is seemingly at a loss, but Senya couldn't be more excited. Marito seems very focused, and it's because he will finally get to settle his beef with Domin. Back with Madakara, his buddies notice that he doesn't seem interested in a battle. Madakara explains that Minato Kai has always been about man-to-man -man combat, and about pursuing strength. He stares at his brother's uniform, and thinks back to when his brother was taken away to Juvie. His brother reminded him that Honkai people never run away and encouraged him to keep working hard to become a Honkai person. Madakar is determined to keep his promise to his brother and to the Minato Kai that he cared about so much. His brother was Minato Kai's legendary 42nd leader and they all look up to him. Just then, Madakar leaves suddenly and explains that he needs to go do something. Goldilocks notices that Zabu hasn't taken his jacket off in a while, but now that he has, his armband is missing. Zabu explains that some crows took it away while he was drying it, but Goldilocks seems suspicious. He isn't too smart, however, and just attacks some nearby crows. A look into the past shows when Zabu was found by a member of NG. His name was Shindo, and Zabu recognized him as the one that NG referred to as the Emperor. This guy was banished from Minato six months ago, but Zabu pointed out that this guy is still acting tough. Shindo wanted to be friends, but Zabu refused and called him a small fry. Zabu's rude gesture caused Shindo to lose it as he beat Zabu relentlessly. Shindo didn't take his insults lightly, so he took Zabu's armband and pointed out that he just got beat up by a small fry. Zabu can hardly live with the embarrassment now and refuses to tell anyone. Elsewhere, Sen is excited to get home so Ara can do more training. Ara points out that training won't be necessary anymore since Marito and Domen will be fighting each other. Senya isn't following, so Ara explains it to his genie-like friend. If Marito wins, then he will have achieved all he has ever desired. Our boy has a crazy imagination, as he thinks Marito will just leave Shiguma to him, and Ara imagines himself telling his future brother-in-law that he can count on him. On the other hand, if Domin were to win, then Marito will have no choice but to leave Shiguma to him. Maharo will fall into despair, and Ara will just have to be there to console her. Ara gets home and finds that Madakara has been waiting for him. Madakara wonders if Ara is planning to fight in the upcoming war, but Ara just says it will depend on the situation. Madakara pleads with Ara to stop Marito and explains that none of the Minato guys would ambush someone like they are being accused of. He is sure that the Shiguma guys wouldn't either and he has a real bad feeling about all of this. Madakara points out that fighting like this isn't what Honkai people do, but Ara says that it's none of his business. Madakara has faith that Ara can stop the war, but Ara just gets frustrated. He tells Madakara to stop talking like a little kid, and Senya can tell that he gets really worked up when Madakara is around. Madakara explains that Ara always stayed by his side and thinks back to their childhood. Ara once showed him one of his friendship stones and used it to stamp his buddy. This was the best friend stone Ara gave him, and they both agreed to become Honkai people together. Madakara declares that he still wants them to become Honkai people together, but something is clearly holding Ara back. He demands that Madakara leave and tells him that all that is ancient history. Senya wonders what happened between him and his old best friend, as he can tell that something big happened. Ara tells him to shut up, but just ends up hitting himself in the head. Madakara returns home with his friendship stone and counts down the days until his brother returns home. He has no idea what to do and wishes that his brother would hurry. The next day, the crazy Maharo eats with her bear brother and Ara joins her. 
Ara is sure that Marito will take the top spot today and he will ask Ara, Marito's trusted companion, to take over Shiguma. Mahiro has turned into a real jerk as she realizes that once Marito wins and graduates, she won't need Ara anymore. Ara wonders what she means but they are interrupted by Madakara. Ara says that he doesn't want to talk but Madakara actually wants to speak with Mahiro. She agrees to go since it's about Marito but Ara tries to warn her about the Minato guys. Ara fears that Madakara might be asking her out and Senya doesn't help ease his concern by saying that Madakara is a lot manlier than him. Mahiro tells Madakara to get to the point so he just comes out and asks her to stop the war. She is insulted by the request but Marito warns that both sides are acting bloodthirsty. At this rate they might even end each other's lives so she should be worried about Marito. Mahiro doesn't think Marito would listen to her anyway so Madakara asks her to persuade Ara to do it instead. Mahiro doesn't think Ara could handle such a task but Madakara is certain that he can. Madakara stops her from leaving just like last time so she tells him to get his dirty hands off of her. She prepares to scream again but this time he stops her. Ara thinks they are hugging though and passes out. Madakara is determined to keep his promise to his brother and protect Minato Kai but he lets her go in case she couldn't breathe. Mahiro is surprised to hear that Madakara has a brother and he explains that he should be able to see him soon. Afterwards, Mahiro walks right up to our boy and tells him to go make her brother stop the war. This manipulative chick uses her heart move and our boy is helpless against it. Moments later though, Ara realizes that he is almost out of time. He chickens out of asking Marito to stop the war and ends up telling him that it seems like it will be fun. Ara thinks about how he can't go through with it and Marito decides to try and feed him. Ara is still pretty spineless at this point in the anime and downs the piping hot burrito in one bite. Marito then explains that he eats and eats but his hunger is never satisfied. At the Minato base the bloodthirsty group vows to end all Shiguma members lives but Zabu is still struggling with his secret. Madakara sees that time is up and Domen arrives. Madakara tries to tell him that Ara is convincing Marito to stop the war as they speak but Domen has already decided. He uses writing as always and declares that it's time to settle things. Everyone heads out for battle but Zabu notices that Madakara stayed behind. The guilt has overwhelmed him so Zabu tells Madakara that he has something to say. Elsewhere Ara sulks as he couldn't find the courage to ask Marito and he is sure that Mahiro will be done with him. Senya riles him up and reminds Ara that Mahiro and Madakara really seem to hit it off. Senya straightens him up but Ara lands right in front of Shindo. Shindo insults him a bunch while telling Ara to go home but Ara strikes back by calling him four eyes. Ara is under a lot of pressure and he lets out his frustration on this guy. Back at the Minato base Zabu reveals that Shindo was actually the one that took down Oda. Shindo set all this up but Zabu takes all the blame. Madakara is just glad that he told him and declares that he will be leaving. He doubts that Marito will believe the truth so he shockingly reveals that he will go straight to Shindo instead. Back with Ara he is taking an absolute beating from Shindo. Senya doesn't like how this guy is using a weapon so he demands that Ara show him the results of their training. Ara is on board and once again wishes to develop plot for the first time. Senya declares Buchigiri as they merge together but Shindo is certain that he can still win. He is shocked however when his weapon has no effect and Ara lands a powerful punch. Our boy isn't done though as he can now throw a second punch. Our heroes celebrate their victory and Senya points out that their merge rate is going up because of his training. Shindo is real messed up with a serious dent in his face and he remembers this pain he feels. Our boys are stunned when Shindo gets up but Senya is more terrified. He can't believe what he is seeing and it's another Majin named Ichiya. Sometime later we get a look inside the NG base just before Madakara barges in and demands for Shindo to come out. The NG members try to attack him since he belongs to Minato Kai but they fail miserably. Madakara sees that these guys are doing something with pipes and realizes what they are planning. Shindo emerges and he assumes that Madakara is there to see the special guest that they are currently entertaining. Shindo calls out AJ but Madakara is shocked to see that this is actually a pretty happy aura. Ara doesn't explain why he is there but he does hurt Madakara when he tells Shindo that the two of them are not really friends. Madakara reveals that Shindo is the one who started the war but Shindo of course denies it. Madakara decides to handle this situation the hard way and moves Ara aside when he tries to stop him. The two guys prepare to fight and Senya wonders if the Majin he saw was real. 
The guys begin fighting, but Madakara is shocked when Shindo just pretends to get hurt. Shindo takes a hold of him and lands a devastating blow. Senya recognizes the powerful kick and determines that Shindo must really have a Chia inside of him. Elsewhere, Zabu tries to get a hold of Madakara, but he isn't picking up his phone. Back at the NG base, we see why, as Madakara is tied up. Ara goes to see him, so Madakara wonders why he's spending time with the NG. More importantly though, he wants to know why he doesn't have clothes on. A look back to their fight shows that Ara was surprised to see that Shindo was able to get up after his punch. Ara tried attacking again, but Shindo stopped him easily. Shindo noticed that Ara yelled out about how he wanted to develop plot for the first time, so he understood completely. Shindo took him to a place where he could see a show, and Ara was in shock. These girls gave him a bunch of attention and called him the king. Senya is pretty embarrassed for him, but Ara just wishes Madakara would give up on stopping the war. He says that fights like this happen all the time, but Madakara points out that fights that have been rigged like this one aren't really fights. Madakara wonders why Ara has changed and points out that Ara used to be way more into Honkai people than he was. Ara angrily reminds him that he doesn't care about Honkai people anymore, and Shindo appears to stop the argument. Ara goes with him and Madakara states that he always believed in him. A look into the past shows that a group of guys started picking on the young Madakara and Ara. Madakara refused to leave since the bullies were making fun of Honkai people. The insults continued so Madakara tried to attack them, but he only ended up getting beaten up. Ara watched from behind a tree and ran away when the guys told him he was next. Ara's stomach now gives him problems and he wishes that Madakara would stop reminding him of that day. Elsewhere, the Shiguma squad get ready for a fight as the Minato Kai guys have finally arrived. Mahiro watches from a distance and becomes excited when she thinks about how all Minato will have to do is beat up the big guy. When he does, he will graduate from Shiguma and he will be all hers. She gets worried since he got hurt before, so she wonders where Ara is as he should be there to help. Back at the NG base, Shindo introduces everyone to Ara. Shindo explains that Ara is unhappy with his current gang, and Shindo trash talks all the guys in Shiguma. Shindo gets upset when the audience doesn't really react, but they are terrified of this dude, so they begin to trash talk Shiguma as well. Shindo tells Ara to join their group, and Ara admits to wanting to learn a lot more about NG. Shindo is eager to teach him, so he explains that they live by the four E's. Energy, Enjoy, Ecstasy, and Emperor. Ara joins in with their little cheer, but he actually thinks it's really dumb. Shindo then explains that it's almost time for the Minato vs Shiguma war, so he demands that they go out there to do some murdering, or they will be the ones to get murdered. Ara tells Senya that these guys don't seem right, and Senya points out that fighting isn't something someone does because they are told to. The two keep talking, and Shindo seems to notice. Ara is a bit confused about what is happening, so Shindo makes it very clear. When the two gangs take each other out, they will round them all up and finish them off. Ara walks past Madakara's cell, and Madakara wonders if he has really given up on becoming a Honkai person. Madakara falls revealing his friendship stone, and he regains confidence that Ara isn't the type of person to give up on his dream. The fight's about to begin, but Madakara still isn't answering his phone, so Zabu runs off. Marieto prepares to fight Domin, and all of Shiguma cheer him on. Nearby, Shindo wonders why Ara was talking to Madakara about Honkai people. Ara explains that it's just how they played as kids, but Madakara doesn't seem to have grown out of it. Shindo wonders if Ara has visited the Honkai shrine, but Senya tells him to lie and say no. Ara does, so Shindo makes up his mind and formally asks Ara to be his right hand man. Ara declines as it's too much responsibility for him, but Shindo points out that the NG girls will be able to help him with plot development. This wins Ara over, but he thinks of Mahiro and becomes torn. Shindo tells him to go after the things he wants, the same way he's going after the destruction of Shiguma and Minato. Ara wonders why he wants to defeat them so bad, but this crazy guy just scratches his neck. Another look into the past shows that Shindo was in trouble, but Domen rescued him from some thugs. Shindo instantly admired him and trained to improve his body every single day. He eventually joined Minato Kai and found himself sparring against someone. He took the upper hand in the fight, but his opponent refused to acknowledge that he lost. This kid then grabbed onto Shindo's leg and told him that his kicks are too weak. The furious Shindo took out a weapon to strike him, but Domen stopped him. 
Everyone was really upset about him using a weapon, but Shindo tried to point out that he had already won the fight. Everyone ignored his pleas, and he became furious when Domin just walked away from him. After that day, Shindo declared that he would be the one to defeat Domin, and if anyone got in his way, he would kill them. Ara is terrified by how hard this guy holds grudges, but Shindo explains that he's just determined. Ara is still hesitant to be this dude's right hand man, and he explains that he's more of a pacifist anyway. Shindo knows how to convince Ara though, so he explains that what all girls really want is a strong man. Ara completely changes his tone after thinking about all the ladies, and he declares that he will show them what true manly strength looks like. At the fight, Domin prepares himself, and Mahara was terrified to see that her brother has to fight a giant monster. Blondie fails to contact Zabu, but we see that Zabu has arrived at the NG base. He finds Madakara, and Madakara tells him that they need to hurry, since Shindo is headed to the fight. It's too late, however, as NG has just arrived at the Coliseum. The NG boys are ready for blood, but Senya thinks it's pathetic that they need weapons. Ara tries to sneak away and explains to Senya that he doesn't want to get caught up in a war. Senya urges him not to run away since if Ara plunges into battle, then their merge rate will skyrocket. Ara's stomach makes him rush to the bathroom, but Shindo stops him. Shindo can tell that he is still hesitant, so he explains that once they take everyone out, they can make some babe theirs. Ara has no clue what he is talking about, so Shindo explains that Marito has a little sister named Maharo. Hearing Shindo talk about Maharo does something strange to Ara, and he begins to breathe angrily. Shindo doesn't seem to notice, so he goes on to say that he wants to put Maharo on display. Ara's body begins to pulse, and something begins to happen to Senya's body as well. Shindo declares that it would be great to have the Shiguma Basa sister around to service him, and he calls her a trophy wife. As we look at the bullet lodged inside Ara's head, his blood begins to boil, and Senya can even feel himself becoming hot. Shindo explains that he could even borrow Maharo to Ara, but this proves to be the last straw as the mark on Ara's back begins to glow. Senya is pulled into Ara's body, and Ara lands a powerful punch right to Shindo's face. Everyone is completely shocked including Senya, but Ara uses this moment to run to the bathroom. Shindo seems oddly happy when he gets up, and it's because he is now more certain than ever that Ara has Senya inside of him. At the Coliseum, everyone's eager to fight, and Marito starts the battle. The two sides rush towards each other, and the two leaders make their calm approach. Just before the two sides clash, Madakara appears to reveal that this entire war is a setup. He tells everyone that it's Shindo's doing, but no one believes him. Zabu decides to come clean, and reveals that Shindo took his armband to trick everyone, but no one wants to hear it. Madakara tries to plead with Domen directly, but he's too focused at the moment. Just then, Madakara sees Ara in the distance. He is being chased by the angry NG boys, but Senya is excited and just wants Ara to beat them all up. No one can understand why the NG boys have arrived, but Madakara is just glad to see that Ara actually came. Madakara thinks this should be enough to stop the war, but Marito explains that none of that matters anymore. Madakara is shocked to see that Domin seems to agree with him, and the two leaders begin their fight. Ara continues to run for his life, but he eventually trips and he can only stare at the huge army of NG boys. In front of him though are the two gangs preparing for battle. The leaders start off the battle, and Madakara can only watch as the two sides fight for all the wrong reasons. Ara can't believe that the battle has actually begun, but Senya couldn't be more excited to fight. The leaders are both extremely powerful, so it's no surprise that they fight evenly. Unable to join the fight, Oda watches nearby and remembers how the rivalry between the two leaders began. Oda and Marito were revered as the guys who dominated every middle school in Honkai City. They were known as the God Kings. Oda wondered if Marito would be joining Minato Kai or Iki Union, but Marito knew he would be bored in either one. Some guys tried to pick a fight with Oda, but they quickly realized that they were the God Kings. One of these guys wanted to prove that the God Kings wouldn't be able to rule this school like they did to the others, but he just ended up learning a lesson instead. Ever since they got to the top in middle school, Oda could tell that Marito was totally burned out. He hoped that in this new school, there would be someone that could revitalize him. The green-haired guy begged them to join Iki Union and brought them to a fight. The Iki Union leader named Shiba was set to fight Domin, and we see that Shindo was there to watch as well. The fight was over in an instant though, as Domin absolutely crushed Shiba. This one-sided slaughter intrigued Marito, and the Minato guy celebrated their victory. 
Mid-celebration, Marita leaped forward and ignored Oda's pleas for him to stop. Marita went directly for an attack on Domin, but of course he stopped it easily. Domin was able to stop another kick, which seemed to have intrigued Marito even more. Marito's ready to fight some more, so he tells the old guy to bring it on, but he's surprised when Domin just walks away. Shiba graduated from Iki Union after his loss, but the others knew they were no match for Domin, so they begged Marito to become their leader. Marito was too busy wondering why Domin just walked away from him, so the others explained that he only fights against people with conviction. People that fight for things like honor or friendship. They told Marito that if he becomes their leader though, Domin would definitely fight him. Marito seemed bothered by the entire situation, but Oda was just glad to see that his friend was motivated again. Marito ended up declining the offer to become leader, but Oda had something in mind. He ran to the Minato base to declare that he had become the new leader of Iki Union and challenged Domin to a fight. News of one of the God Kings challenging Domin spread fast and it eventually reached Marito. While Oda had always been a skilled fighter himself, he stood no chance against the powerful Domin. Oda was quickly defeated, so he dramatically told Marito that it was up to him. Marito was able to see right through his friend and realized that he just got Domin riled up to fight him. Marito made it clear that conviction has nothing to do with what's about to happen and all he wanted was excitement. Domin once again blocked Marito's kick, but this time Marito was able to break it. This of course shocked everyone, but what was even more surprising is that Domin seemed to become excited. The two went on to land attack after attack, and Oda could tell that Marito was back to his old self again. They would go on to continue fighting, but a winner was never determined. Moving forward, Domin refused to graduate, as he decided to wait for the day when Marito could finally defeat him. Back to the present, the two leaders still fight evenly. Mahiro begs her brother to stop fighting, and she demands that Arago do something. Ara half-heartedly tries to stop them, but he just gets ignored. Marito couldn't be having more fun though, and declares that his next attack will settle their rivalry. This attack is an incredibly powerful one, but it is met by a punch from Domin. Everyone watches in awe of their power, and their attack causes the wall to collapse. The two leaders have caused some serious damage to each other, as they are now both out cold. Ara wonders what he can do to help, but Mahiro states that she is done with him. Everything has gone just as planned for Shindo, so he tells his men to eliminate everyone. He will punish them if they don't, so the entire army moves in. Both the Minato Kai and Shiguma squads are furious to realize what the NG boys have done, so they go to fight them. Senya realizes that jumping into this huge war will skyrocket his merge rate with Ara, but Ara is completely disinterested. Senya tries to remind him of all the training he did, but Ara stares at Mahiro and points out that training and fighting don't mean anything now. Senya can't believe that Ara really did everything just so a girl would like him, but Ara wonders what other reason could there possibly be. Senya forces him to watch the battle and points out that all his friends are fighting for their lives. He questions if Ara is really just going to turn his back on them and run, but Ara's stomach starts hurting again. He declares that those people are not his friends. They aren't anything to him, so he runs away. Senya is disappointed in him and realizes now that Ara doesn't have what he was looking for after all. Shindo finds Ara and reveals that he knows about Senya. Ara can't believe that Senya isn't just his imaginary friend, but things get serious as Shindo begins to attack him. Even though Ara has abandoned him, Madakara still worries about his friend. Shindo implores Ara to merge with Senya and warns that he will end his life if he doesn't. Shindo pulls out a blade from his shoe and stabs Ara with it, making it clear to Senya that Shindo really will take his life. Senya begs for them to merge, but Ara has determined that he no longer has a reason to live. Madakara gets concerned for his friend again, but this just causes him to take some serious damage. He is completely vulnerable and swarmed by NG boys. Shindo continues to beat down on Ara and asks his Majin if Ara really has Senya inside of him. Shindo decides to help out with the battle and reveals to everyone that he was behind it all. He thanks them all for falling right into his trap, so Blondie attacks him. He only manages to get beat up, so Shindo taunts Zabu next. Zabu gets taken out as well, so Shindo just tells the others to hurry up and fight all at once. Everyone is infuriated by his arrogance, so they all go in for an attack, but Shindo's just too strong. Madakara is the only one that finally manages to land an attack, but Shindo is shockingly not affected. Shindo retaliates and causes excruciating pain to Madakara by attacking his bad leg. Nearby, Ara regains consciousness, and the first thing he sees is Madakara getting beat up. 
Ara has flashbacks to when Madakara was beaten as a kid, and Sunny once again questions if Ara is okay with turning his back on a friend. Ara doesn't respond, so Sanya gets frustrated since he was so close to reaching something he wanted. Madakara does his best to fight back against Shindo, but it's no hope. Shindo disrespectfully wipes blood off his shoe on Madakara and decides that he will now move on. He looks at the leaders and declares that he will make it so they can never fight again. Just then, Maharo stands up to him and tells the creep to disappear. Shindo strikes her down for this, shocking Ara. Shindo tells her to stay out of the fight since she is powerless. Ara once again has flashbacks and tells Maharo not to do this. He tells her to run, but Maharo once again stands before Shindo. The thought of running makes her sick as Shindo doesn't scare her at all. Maharo decides to insult him instead and calls him an empty shell that doesn't know who he is until others tell him. The angry Shindo decides that she will pay for her words with her life and he uses his blade to strike her down. His attack surprisingly doesn't land and Maharo is shocked to see that Ara stopped him. Marakara sees this as well and Shindo tells Ara to just give up. He starts whipping our boy, cutting him all over his body, but Ara just keeps moving forward. Senyo watches in amazement as he realizes that their merge rate is going up from this. Shindo lands a devastating hit, but Ara refuses to give up and continues pushing forward. Shindo strikes him even harder, and Senya wonders how high their merge rate could possibly go. The merged Ara's first punch just barely grazes Shindo, but it still manages to cut his face. Shindo is then the one to be shocked as Ara blocks his kick. Everyone around watches Ara fight, and they begin to root for him. Ara pushes Shindo back, but Shindo manages to block one punch. Zabu is next to cheer him on, and Ara manages to break Shindo's block. Madakara encourages his friend to end the fight, and Ara once again announces his goal to develop plot for the first time. With that, Ara lands his most powerful punch yet, sending Shindo flying several meters and utterly destroying him. Everyone watches in complete silence, but they are then shocked when Shindo somehow manages to stand up. He just ends up collapsing right after though, and everyone celebrates. Senya is stunned more than anything though, since Ara just faced an opponent possessed by Ichiya and somehow won. Ara instantly rushes to see if Maharo is okay, but she is at a complete loss for words. The others interrupt their little moment, and the leaders are checked on to see if they are okay. Madakara tells Ara that he always believed in him, and he knew that Ara would do the right thing. Ara refuses to take credit though, and points out that he wasn't the one that didn't give up. Madakara doesn't completely understand, but Ara just says it's nothing. Madakara is still in really bad shape, but he's shocked when Ara helps him stand up, and tells him that it's time to go home. Sometime later, Ara returns to his restaurant house, and his mom seems proud to see him all beat up. Ara gets cleaned up, and Senya compliments him on his powerful punch. Senya admits that he was wrong about him, but Ara points out that he just cares about getting Maharo to love him. Ara does wonder how Shindo knew about Senya, but Senya says he has no clue. Senya strangely stares at the mark on Ara's back though, and thinks about how the time has finally come. Another look into the past shows what happened after Murito fought Domin. This is when he agreed to become Iki Union's leader, and changed the name to Shiguma. Back to the present, Oda wishes his friend would stop losing, but Marito's quick to point out that he didn't lose. Marito declares that things will be different next time. Oda assumes that he means he will win next time, but Marito declares that he will just get a bigger cup of noodles. Sometime later, Senya is proud to see that Ara is finally starting to show his inner Honkai. Ara has come to expect that from himself since he's the only person suited to take over from Marito and capture Maharo's heart. Ara arrives to find that Maharo isn't in class, and Goldilocks appears to compliment Ara about his awesome punching ability. Madakara would like to speak with him, but Ara will be too busy looking for Maharo. Madakara informs him that she is at the hospital looking after her brother, so our boy Ara blasts off to go see her. On the way, Madakara reveals to Ara that his brother is in juvie. Two years ago, he beat up a cop who was forcing his buddies to sell drugs. When being taken away, he encouraged Madakara to keep working at becoming a Honkai person, and those words have kept Madakara going this entire time. Ara acknowledges that he has been through a lot, and Madakara reveals that his brother will be returning next week. At the hospital, Maharo shows her brother that she made some food for him. The food looks pretty terrible, but she promises that it will help him feel better. She tries to force feed him, but Marito manages to stop her. Ara arrives at the hospital, singing his theme song about getting all the ladies, and he pretends to be surprised to see Maharo there. 
Mahiro thinks of Ara as the creepy rock guy, but the clueless kid can't help but enjoy being looked at by her. Marito explains that he will go crazy staying at the hospital, and they have a good laugh when Ara says that he thought he was already crazy. Mahiro tells Ara to leave since only family members are allowed, and Marito calls out to her. She responds in the hopes that he has something nice to say to her, but she just tells her to leave instead. Ara runs after her when she gets upset, but she pins him to a wall and declares that him beating some random opponent doesn't make him a big deal. Ara doesn't seem to register what's really going on, and he's just glad that she pushed him. Marito compliments him for his actions in the war, but Ara is very humble about it. He only did what he thought needed to be done, and in return, he only asks that Marito leave Shiguma and Maharo to him. Marito asks him to go on a group date instead, and that just so happens to be one of Ara's favorite things. Tattoo is organizing it all, but he gets upset when Ara doesn't like that so many people were invited. Tattoo is excited for Ara since he will become super popular after defeating Shindo, and he thinks they should celebrate at the beach. Ara lets his mind run with ideas for the group date, and he couldn't be happier. Madakara looks forward to the group date as well, and he thinks about how Ara really did seem like a Honkai person during the fight. Greenhead is not in the mood to go because he feels like he owes Ara now, but Madakara points out that he played a big role by saving him. Back home, Ara checks out his muscles, but Senya and his mom have a hard time finding them. That night, Ara wonders if he has become more of a man, and Senya agrees that he looked pretty tough. Ara thinks about all the activities that are waiting for him at the beach, and he wonders if the date could end with him kissing Maharo. He even considers that he might develop plot for the first time, but Senya just calls him a weirdo. Ara arrives at the beach, but he finds that no one is there. He checks a tent to find that this entire event is actually a group combat date. Tatsu declares that the event will now begin, so Oda and Domin enter the ring. Ara wonders if this is really the group date, and Senya couldn't imagine a more fun time. The fight begins with some grappling, and Oda fights hard to get out of a headlock. Domin is strangely not moving, but when he does, he manages to knock Oda back. Domin has a fearsome look on his face, and Tatsu wonders if he's planning to end the fight. Domin has completely stopped moving though, so everyone gets confused. Tatsu checks out what's going on, and must announce to everyone that Domin has thrown out his back. Oda is announced the winner, but he is in bad shape. Zabu declares that he will be going all out to pay Ara back for the fight, but Ara points out that he isn't fighting anyway. A look at the bracket reveals that he is fighting though, so Ara heads outside completely terrified. Being able to see Maharo in a bikini is all he has to look forward to now, but this dream of his is crushed as well when he sees that Maharo is more covered up than ever. Inside, Goldilocks wins a fight, but Marito reveals that he is next. Maharo goes overboard admiring him as always, and Marito makes quick work of the blondie. Marito is announced the winner, and everyone takes a quick break. Maharo has gotten a bit hungry, so the ultimate simp Ara eagerly offers to go get her some food. Shindo is furious to have been reduced to cooking food, but Achiha tells him to be patient. Shindo must serve Ara, and Ara wonders where he heard the name Senya from. Shindo plays dumb and tells him to ask Senya himself, but Senya just drags him away. Back in the tent, Madakara wins and everyone cheers him on. He has already taken out 7 people, but Zabu is next. Zabu declares that he will be victorious, but Madakara easily beats him. Marido then goes on to beat several opponents, and all the Shiguma guys are glad to be on his team. Madakara is the only one left on the Minato side, so Ara is relieved that he won't have to fight. Marido is unsatisfied with how one-sided the matches have been, so he decides to have Ara fight on Minato's side. It will be a tag team match between them, and Jabashiri will be Marido's teammate. Ara doesn't think they should do it, but he is shocked when Madakara thinks they should. Senya refuses to merge with Ara, since he wants to see Ara's Honkai in action. The final match is about to begin, so Tattoo announces everyone. Cheers erupt for the Shiguma guys, and Maharo goes crazy for her brother. Madakara is introduced as a giant, and Ara has come to be known as the one-hit, one-kill striker. Ara lets Madakara start the fight, but he thinks about how there is no chance he will be tagging in. The two opponents begin with grappling, and Jabashiri takes a commanding lead. Madakara manages to balance out the fight with several wrestling maneuvers, and the two end up being pretty evenly matched. Ara is pretty disinterested, but he spots Maharo begging for her brother to tag in and show everyone what he's made of. To no one's surprise, Ara is inspired and tells Madakara to tag him in. Jabashiri is insulted to see him so confident, but Marito stops him from attacking. Jabashiri insists that he let him fight, 
but Marito demands that he tag him in. Marito tells Ara to bring it on, but Ara just pretends to have an injury instead. He realized that if he tried to show off, he will just end up getting deleted. He decides to let Madakara handle the rest of the fight, but Marito just ends up beating him up pretty badly. The crowd cheers him on, so Madakara proclaims that he won't give up. However, this just makes Marito use his signature move called the King Cobra Twist. Marito taunts Ara and points out that Madakara will die if he doesn't tag in. Ara thinks about how the fight is just supposed to be for fun and Madakara should just give up. Madakara shocks everyone when he manages to break free, but it's clear that his shoulder is injured. Everyone admires his determination as he pushes Marito back and Marito is shocked to see that he made him bleed. This was completely unexpected, but it makes Marito get serious and he sends Madakara into the sky. Marito prepares to land the final blow, but Ara manages to distract him by pointing to a non-existent burrito wrap. It works, but the crowd goes silent as Marito is infuriated. He pulls Ara into the ring himself, and he knocks Tatsu out when he tries to stop him. Marito is furious that he lied about a hot pocket and follows him out of the ring. Madakara tries to remind him that he's Marito's real opponent, but he now has his hands busy with Jabashiri. Madakara somehow manages to defeat Jabashiri with just one arm, but Ara is still in big trouble. Madakara declares that they will be the ones winning today, and he lands a flying kick. Marito nearly loses consciousness, but he is driven by his love for handheld foods. He sends Ara flying, but Ara's lifeless body ends up knocking Jabashiri out. Tatsu completes a three count, and everyone cheers as Madakara and Ara are announced the winners. The two guys celebrate, and Ara wishes his buddy would cut it out. Marito can hardly control his rage from losing, and he brings down the entire tent. The day is over, and Madakara was reminded of the old days when the two buddies used to fight side by side. Ara points out that they never did anything this crazy though, and he never wants to do it again. Madakara can't help but admire how Ara is like a Honkai person because of this fight and the punch he used to defeat Shindo. He thinks Ara is really incredible, but Ara has had enough of all the compliments. Maharo passes them on her camel though, so Ara goes right after her. The eventful day has come to an end, but we see that Shindo and Shenji are nearby as they are watching Madakara. A look into the past shows Madakara at the Honkai temple as his brother teaches him about Honkai people. A Honkai person is one who finds a heart that does not flee. They are not just strong, but strong and pure. Just then, Madakara gets scared as he sees a shadow moving. His brother explains that it's something that sneaks in through the cracks in weak people's hearts. His final message is that being a Honkai person means that you never run away. Back to the present, Madakara gets ready as it's almost time to see his brother again. Elsewhere, Mahiro admires pictures of Marito, but she's interrupted by Ara. She would rather eat alone, but Ara thinks she means eating away from large groups. His mom packed him a lunch with luck, hoping that it will make Ara's crush fall in love with him, and he wonders if it came true. It has not, so Ara explains that he regrets having to fight Mahiro's brother. On the bright side, he thinks this will allow Marito to retire without any regrets. Ara builds up the courage to ask Mahiro out on a date, but she is long gone. Madakara just so happens to show up, and Ara blames him for ruining his life. Madakara has a request for Ara. He reveals that his brother will be returning soon, and he wants to stuff his face with good food. Madakara was hoping that they could have his welcome home party at Ara's restaurant, and Ara actually thinks it's a good idea. Madakara's friends will be going, and so will Domin. Senya is excited as well, since he is sure that Madakara's brother will be strong. Ara has only met the guy once, but he seems like he's even tougher than Domin. Senya gets excited for an opportunity to merge with Ara again, but Ara wonders why he wants to keep merging with him so much. This catches him off guard, and Senya gets a bit flustered. He makes a joke about wanting to build a family, but Ara rejects that idea. By the shrine, Shindo's getting beat up by his old subordinates. Madakara stops them and tells them that they should fight Shindo one-on-one -on -one instead of ganging up on him. The guys are furious since Shindo treated them so poorly, but Madakara threatens to fight them if they don't stop. Shindo thanks Madakara and apologizes for what he did before. Ara helped him realize the error in his ways since when they fought it seemed like Ara was a true Honkai person. Shindo explains that he too tried to become a Honkai person, but he eventually gave up. Madakara did too, and he explains that he and Ara used to train by this temple. Shindo realizes that this must be why they are so strong, but Madakara admits that he could never compare to Ara. 
Shindo has an idea as to why that might be, and he reveals that the temple holds a secret. Shindo wonders if it would be better if Madakara didn't know about the secret, and he leaves without saying anything about it. When Shindo is alone, he wonders if that was enough. Ichi is satisfied, and he reminds Shindo that they both hide grudges deep within their hearts. Shindo wants revenge against Omen, and Ichiya wants revenge against someone as well. Ichiya explains that they are one and the same, but Shindo doesn't need any reminding. While preparing for the party, Madakara wonders if R is into wrestling now, but R explains that he is not the one watching it. R's mom is glad to hear that Madakara's brother is the ideal age of 21, and R tells her to get out of there already and go buy her ingredients. The two guys begin cooking, but Madakara is completely hopeless when it comes to the kitchen. Madakara remembers trying to cook with his brother before, and it didn't go so well either. Madakara explains that after saving up some money, he and his brother will be getting an apartment together, so Ara should visit them. Unfortunately, Ara says that he will be too busy spending time with Maharo, but Madakara tells him to bring her with. The next day, Madakara happily goes off to see his brother, but we see that he misses a phone call. Madakara makes the long trip to go pick him up, and we see that everyone is at the restaurant preparing for the party. Madakara arrives at the correction facility, but he is a bit early. Domen arrives at the party, and Ara gets embarrassed by how excited his mom gets. It begins to rain, but Madakara becomes excited as his brother exits the building. Surprisingly though, this isn't Madakara's brother. Madakara's surprise turns to devastation as the man tells him some terrible news. The next day, Zabo goes to look for Madakara, but his mother hasn't seen him since the day before. Things are pretty bad though, as she reveals that something happened to his brother. At the restaurant, Ara is upset that Madakara never showed up, but his mom tells Ara to tell him that he is welcome there anytime. At school, Ara tells Mahiro about a new carving stone he found, but he's interrupted by Madakara's other friends. They reveal that Madakara's brother tried to break up a fight in Juvie, and he ended up getting stabbed. He is still alive, but the doctors are saying that he's not going to make it. No one has been able to find Madakara, so they were hoping that Ara might know a place that he and his brother used to go to. Ara gets defensive as he tells them that he doesn't know, and explains that they know Madakara better than he does. Zabu is then the one to get upset, as he points out that Madakara is supposed to be his buddy. Ara denies being buddies with Madakara, but this just gets Zabu even more upset. He calls Ara a jerk, and they leave. Senya sympathizes with them, and he is sure that Madakara must be going through hell right now. Afterwards, Ara blames them for making him miss the opportunity to eat lunch with Mahiro. Ara takes a look at his meal and sees the burnt food he made with Madakara. Elsewhere, Madakara hopes that what's happening is not real. Just then, Madakara is shocked by a moving shadow. This thing chases him, and Madakara ends up in a dark alleyway. The shadow is relentless though, and it appears before him once again. Afterwards, Madakara arrives outside of Ara's restaurant. Ara's mom lets him in to see Ara, but he is fast asleep. Madakara seems calm, but he's surprised when he sees the bullet lodged in Ara's head. He remembers the time Zabu told him that Ara had a monkey on his back, and also the time Shindo mentioned the temple's secret. Madakara's curiosity gets the best of him, and he touches the bullet. Just then, Senya appears, and Madakara runs off scared out of his mind. Shindo finds him, and somehow knows about what Madakara just saw. Shindo explains that the thing he saw is the only reason why Ara got so strong so quickly. He explains that Ara's strength is completely fake, but Madakara doesn't believe him. Shindo points out that the creature inside of Ara is actually possessing him, but Madakara still refuses to believe that Ara isn't really strong. Shindo really pushes him even more as he explains that Ara isn't a Honkai person at all, and he has been fooling Madakara this entire time. Madakara still refuses to believe him as he runs off, and Shindo laughs like a maniac. Elsewhere, Senya urges Ara to look for Madakara, but Ara reminds him that they aren't buddies. Senya points out that he must be worried about him after what happened to his brother, but Ara refuses to say anything. Just as Senya searches for Madakara, Ara gets an idea of where he might be. Ara finds him at the temple and wonders if he is okay. Madakara reveals that he saw the monster that came out of Ara, but he still wants to believe that Ara's strength comes from within himself. Madakara still believes in Ara. He is the strongest person he knows, and he is sure that Ara would never run away from anything. Ara's stomach begins to hurt again, and he reveals that there is something he has never been able to tell Madakara. 
Ara then asks if he remembers the time he was beaten up by the bullies, and Madakara explains that he could never forget. He was beaten up because he was too weak, and he has always assumed that that is why Ara stopped wanting to train with him. Even now, Madakara promises to get stronger, and pleads with Ara for them to start over and keep working to become Honkai people. Ara clenches his stomach once again, and finally admits to Madakara that he abandoned him and ran. Madakara refuses to believe that he's the type to run away, but Ara explains that he's not the kind of guy he thinks he is. Madakara still doesn't want to believe him, but Ara exclaims that his own weakness is why he ran away. Ara admits that he has always been weak from the start, and he wants Madakara to quit pretending like he's not. Ara explains that the monster he saw is called Senya, and he admits that he only got stronger by using his power. Everything begins to sink in, as Madakara wonders if Ara has really been lying to him this entire time. He even wonders if he was lying about wanting to become a Honkai person, and Ara just says that he's not trying to become one anymore. Ara heads home, and Senya wonders if he feels better now. Ara seems confused at first, but he realizes something and just heads home. At the temple, Shindo finds the very upset Madakara. Madakara becomes terrified after seeing the shadow again, but Shindo tells him to calm down as all his worries are over. Shindo takes the old gun and tells Madakara that he has suffered enough. He puts the gun in Madakara's hand and explains that what he's about to do will release him from his suffering. Madakara fires the weapon right at the shadow and the bullet ricochets right back at him. When Madakara wakes up, he finds that the bullet is lodged inside his chest. He touches it and is absolutely shocked when a mysterious being appears before him. After Madakara loses consciousness again, Shindo becomes furious. Ichiya didn't do what they agreed to do and instead transferred over to Madakara. Shindo wants answers, so Ichiya simply explains that he will always choose the strongest host. That isn't the only reason though, as Madakara seems to carry an immeasurable darkness deep within himself. Shindo is still furious, but Ichiya reminds him to be grateful since he was able to get out of the situation without having his body taken over. Shindo has no clue what he's talking about, but Ichiya explains that it's no longer his concern. Shindo fails to use the gun, and Ichiya leaves into Madakara's body as he has no use for a weakling like Shindo. At school, Mahiro ignores our hopeless protagonist, and the others wonder where Madakara has been for the past three days. They feel really bad for him, since Madakara was really looking forward to moving in with his brother. Ara overhears them, and seems to feel bad as well. Shindo overhears the NG boys plotting to get the revenge on him, so he gets away from their base as fast as possible. At the restaurant, Senya wishes Ara didn't tell Madakara off the way he did, but Ara points out that he had a lot to get off his chest. Senya can tell that Ara is actually upset about it as well, so he tries to cheer him up. Madakara's friends are glad to see that he has returned home, so they rush to go see him. Madakara is busy emptying his piggy bank, and his friends express how sorry they are to hear what happened to his brother. They try to cheer him up with some food, but Madakara just seems bothered by them. The friends decide to let him be, but they tell him to make sure to come to school the next day. Ara laments how the bath at his house isn't working, so he must go to Madakara's place since it has the only public bath nearby. Just then, Ara bumps into Madakara. Ara tries to explain that he's going to his house, but Madakara just rushes off. At the shrine, Shindo is still furious. He can never forgive the betrayal and vows to destroy everything. Just then, he spots some kind of Honkai pamphlet and gets a devious smile on his face. Senya wonders where Madakara went, but Ara doesn't care and just wants to take a bath. The other guys are there as well, and Ara points out that it might be better to just leave Madakara alone for now, but Zabu disagrees. Elsewhere, Mahiro cheerfully points out how her and her brother have matching cups. She pours Marido some tea, but she detects that her real brother is approaching. She leaves the fake Marido doll to hide under a crocodile, and the real Marido enters his room. Marido is furious to hear that Mitsukuni was stabbed, because guys who were once the head of Minato aren't supposed to just drop dead. Mitsukuni was a legend, and Doman couldn't even beat him. Marido is shocked to hear that he was Madakara's brother, but Marito gets suspicious after hearing another voice. He isn't able to find anyone, so the two guys just talk about how Madakara hasn't been to school lately. They assume that he must be feeling terrible, and Mahiro overhears them. Elsewhere, Ichiya asks Madakara what he's so afraid of, and Madakara releases him. Madakara is terrified as he still sees the shadow that has been following him. Ichiya explains that it embodies the weakness in his heart, 
and his desire to run away. Ichiya has the answer though, and offers to free Madakara of this shadow. Once Madakara acquires strength, the shadow will disappear and be gone forever. Madakara calls him a liar, and points out that he already tried to get stronger after Ara left him. No matter how strong he got though, that monster that follows him never disappeared. Ichiya questions if he really pursued strength. He points out that Madakara didn't defeat everyone and rise to the top. He wonders if Madakara really didn't just run away, and Madakara recalls when he lost to Domin. It was a terrible moment, but he points out that the other guys accepted him even after that. Ichiya points out that friends offer nothing but comfort for the weak, and they are useless for those training to become Honkai people. Madakara refuses to believe that, but he can't even bear to keep his eyes open for more than a second. Ichiya explains that Ara is Madakara's weakness. As long as he continues to rely on him, Madakara will never become a Honkai person, and the monster will never disappear. The answer to all his problems is to defeat Ara. At school, Ara wonders if Mahara will want the new carving stone he got her. Senya points out that no one would want a stone, but Ara can think of one person who would want it, and that's Madakara. Just then, Mahara asks to speak with him, so they head to the roof. Ara knew she would want the stone, but Mahara really just wants to know how Madakara is doing. She heard about his brother passing away, and she understands how he feels so strongly that it hurts her, almost as if it happened to her. Ara is shocked to hear her talking about Madakara this way, and he remembers when Madakara held her. Ara becomes frantic, and she wonders if he ever considered Madakara's feelings. She is disgusted when it becomes clear that he hasn't, and she tells him not to talk to her until he does. Afterwards, Ara can't believe that Maharo is into Madakara, and he dodges Sunny's attempt at making him feel better. Shindo appears from an alley, and Ara demands to know how he knows about Senya. Shindo explains that Ara will find out soon enough, and leaves something in Ara's pocket. At the shrine, Ichiya continues to tell Madakara that he will be released from the monster's grasp if he defeats Ara. Madakara could never do such a thing, but Ichiya reminds him that Ara has been lying to him this entire time. His convincing works as Madakara begins to wonder how Ara could do this to him. Ichiya assures him that he will free Madakara from the monster by making him a Honkai person, so he needs to go and defeat Ara now. Ara goes to the public bath again, but he wonders why Senya keeps talking about Madakara. Senya explains that Ara and Madakara bring back some fond memories for him, as he also trained with someone to become Honkai people. A look back shows Senya as a young boy. One day he met a boy after he fought an opponent much bigger than him. The boy was able to defeat his opponent with just one kick, and Senya decided that he wanted to become strong just like that. Senya admired this boy and his desire to become a Honkai person, so he also made it his goal to become one. The two grew up training together, and he was the one that gave Senya his name. His friend meant absolutely everything to him, but something bad eventually happened. That is why he just wants Ara and Madakara to stay friends. Senya reminds Ara that if he wants to become Honkai with someone, then he has to have their back. But Ara reminds him that that was when they were younger. Senya explains that at first, he wondered why he got stuck with a guy like Ara. However, after a while, he realized how incredibly determined Ara is. His determination might even be considered excessive, but that's something Honkai people can relate to. Senya really likes that about him, but Ara doesn't want to hear that kind of talk from another guy. Now that Senya thinks about it, he is sure that the determination in Ara is why Madakara decided to become a Honkai person. Just then, Madakara appears in front of them. He tells Ara that he wants to fight him, but Ara doesn't hear him. The confused Ara is then shocked when Madakara charges at him and begins attacking. Madakara lands a kick, so Senya thinks they should merge as he can tell that Madakara is really dangerous right now. Ara once again wishes to develop plot for the first time, and he merges with Senya. The two begin to fight more evenly now, and all Madakara can think about is beating him. Ichiya drives more fear into him by reminding him that he will be consumed by the monster if he doesn't win. Madakara lands another attack, and this makes it clear to Senya that Ichiya has transferred into him. Ara tries to snap him out of it, but Madakara just tells Ara that he has to fight him and he can't run away. Ara's stomach begins to ache just as Madakara prepares to kick him, but Madakara stops himself. Ara rushes off to the bathroom, and Madakara wishes his brother was there, since he doesn't know what's happening to himself. 
Ichi is of course disappointed as he realizes that Madakara's kindness is preventing him from becoming totally ruthless. Back home, Ara patches himself up and tries to figure out what just happened. Senya reveals that Ichiha possessed Madakara, but Ara has no clue what he's talking about and demands that Senya tell him everything. Instead of doing that, Senya just returns to the bullet, but Ara notices the letter that Shindo left. Ara goes to meet with Shindo, but he must explain that Senya is refusing to come out. The note Shindo left was something about a secret that Senya is hiding, so Shindo plans to tell Ara Senya's true objective. Ara tells him to just say it, so Shindo reveals that Senya wants to take over Ara's body. At the shrine, Ichiha tells Madakara that he's a coward. That isn't all though, as he compares Madakara to his brother, who he says was also a coward that couldn't protect his family. This upsets Madakara, and he declares that his brother was every bit as strong as a Honkai person. Ichiha lets out a laugh and reveals that his brother was just a fake and nothing like a Honkai person at all. Ichiha states that his brother died because he was weak, so Madakara tells him to shut up. Madakara's rage causes his mark to glow as he tries to attack Ichiha. He ends up hitting the shadow instead, and Madakara is shocked to see that the monster disappeared. Ichiha is pleased with this and explains that what Madakara really lacks is anger. Ichiha then declares that it's time for Madakara to dive headfirst into a whirlpool of anger and hate. Then he will be ready to slay Ara, the person who deceived him. Shindo laughs like a maniac and explains to Ara that once Senya takes over his body, Ara will die. Ara has no clue what the psycho is talking about, so Shindo goes on to say that Senya was lying to him. Ara is sure that Senya would never do anything like that, so Shindo tells him to just ask Senya directly. Furthermore, Shindo reveals that he better tell Madakara too, as he is running out of time. At school, Ara remembers how Mahara told him not to talk to her until he starts considering Madakara more. Madakara's friends are disappointed to see that he hasn't come back to school, but they are ecstatic when he just now shows up. Madakara tells them that it's time to go have some fun, and they head to the arcade. Ara watches and tells Senya to come out to talk, but he doesn't. At the arcade, Madakara leaves his friends to get a drink, and he bumps into one of the NG boys. They back off when they realize that it's Madakara, but Madakara shockingly punches the guy. He explains that it's the guy's fault for bumping into him, and he gets surrounded. Zabu overhears some commotion, and Madakara's friends arrive to see that he just destroyed the NG boys. This is pretty strange behavior, since Madakara never really cared about them before. Afterwards, Ichi is pleased with Madakara's behavior, but explains that the random NG boys won't be enough. Madakara spots the Shiguma squad and wonders if they would be better. He tells Jabashiri that his business isn't with him and blows right by him to attack Morito. Morito is more than willing to oblige the aggression and is surprised to see that Madakara isn't depressed like everyone is saying. Morito decides to play with him, but he is surprised when Madakara actually manages to block his kick. Madakara does his best to land a strike, but Morito is clearly just toying with him as he dodges everything. Madakara refuses to retreat when Ichiha tells him to, but Ichiha points out that he isn't ready to fight Morito yet. Madakara runs off, and Morito stops Jabashiri from going after him. Morito explains that Madakara is all his, and he shows Oda how he actually took some damage. Back home, Ara knows that Senya can hear him, so he explains that Shindo accused him of some pretty bad stuff. Ara's mom overhears something about someone taking over Ara's body, but she has it all wrong. She thinks he has fallen in love, and recommends that he surrender his body and soul to this girl, just like she and his father did. Ara kicks the psycho out of his room, and he pleads for Senya to come out and tell him that the things about him wanting to end his life are not true. At the shrine, Madakara is upset about being told to run away, but Ichiha explains that if he loses now, then he will live in fear of the shadow monster forever. Madakara is terrified once again when the shadow haunts him, so he frantically goes out and finds some guys to beat up. Zabu goes to speak with Domin and informs him that Madakara has been going around picking fights. He is worried since this isn't like Madakara at all, and he is shocked when Domin tells him to just bring Madakara to him. Elsewhere, Madakara decides to walk past Tatsu, so Chia wonders why he isn't going to fight him. Madakara explains that Tatsu isn't strong enough, but Ichiha instructs him to fight him anyway. Madakara hesitates, but Ichiha once again uses fear of the monster to manipulate him. Tatsu is furious with Madakara for picking on everyone, but Madakara can tell that he's scared, and he instructs Tatsu to run away. Tatsu refuses since Madakara has hurt so many of his friends, 
but he is shocked when Madakara doesn't even try to dodge his punch. After kicking Tatsu, Madakara begins to leave, but Ichiya explains that he needs to keep fighting him. Madakara points out that he already won the fight, but Ichiya tells him that he must become more ruthless and abandon his cowardly heart. Tatsu refuses to back down, so Madakara prepares to finish him. Nearby, Jabashiri is picking out an ice cream bar for Tatsu when he overhears some guys talking about how something was really hard to watch. They were talking about a fight and how Tatsu was about to lose his life. We then see that Tatsu is unconscious and the furious Jabashiri yells as he attacks Madakara. The enraged Jabashiri violently attacks Madakara and manages to land a headbutt. He is surprisingly taking control of the fight, so Ichiya puts Madakara down for losing to a weakling. Ichiya reminds him of the monster, so the remotivated Madakara starts to assert his dominance over Jabashiri. Jabashiri refuses to give up, but Madakara just puts him down. Madakara then starts to stomp on him, so the concerned Tatsu begs him to stop. Madakara just knocks him aside as well, and Ichiya is pleased by what he sees. The next day, some students discuss the fight. Madakara left the two of them half dead after he kept kicking them, even when they could no longer get up. Ara overhears them, but he refuses to believe it. Elsewhere, Jabashiri is inconsolable after losing. He thought he would be able to beat Madakara this time, but he could not have been more wrong. Just then, Marita shows up, and Tatsu reveals that Madakara wouldn't stop going after Jabashiri even after the fight was over. Jabashiri wishes he wouldn't have said anything, and Marito reminds him that Madakara is his. Jabashiri apologizes, so Marito just leaves him some food. Oda tells him to get some rest, and Jabashiri eats the food like there's no tomorrow. Oda points out that Madakara and Jabashiri always used to seem pretty evenly matched in the past. However, things have definitely changed. Oda doesn't think Marito should fight him, but Marito's just glad that he has something exciting to look forward to. Elsewhere, Madakara finishes up beating up some Shiguma guys, and his friends arrive to scold him. This isn't like him at all, but Madakara wonders what makes Zabu think that he knows him. Toma points out how rude that is to say to his friend who has been worried about him this entire time, but Madakara explains that he's just trying to get stronger. Zabu calms Toma down and tells Madakara that Domin wants to see him. Madakara surprisingly says that he's saving him for last, and Zabu demands to know what he meant by that. Just then, Marito makes an announcement over the loudspeakers. His message is for Madakara, and he tells him to come to the field to play. Everyone rushes off to see the fight between the two monsters, and the teacher is glad to see that at least one student stayed for his class. This teacher is touched by Ara's dedication to learning, but Ara remembers that Shundo told him that he was running out of time to tell Madakara the secret. Outside, we see that students are trying to guess who will win the fight. Maharo screams to silence them, and points out that it's obvious that Marito will win. The two fighters meet at the center of the field, and Ara arrives to find that the fight has already started as Madakara pushes Marito back. Marito gets him back with a kick, but the crowd gasps in amazement when they see that Madakara blocked it. Marito decides not to hold back anymore, but he gets more and more surprised every time Madakara blocks an attack. Madakara then starts pushing him back. Shindo calls Marito an idiot for trying to toy with Madakara, and Maharo hates Madakara for thinking he could win. Just then, Madakara thinks he has found an opening, but he just ends up getting kicked. Marito wants to play some more, and he starts taking control of the fight. He's disappointed to see that this is all Madakara's got, but Madakara tosses some dirt in his eye and prepares to take advantage. Marito once again just kicks him before he can do anything, and everyone is amazed. The crowd is disappointed to see that the fight is so one-sided, and they realize that Madakara never really had a chance. Ichiya watches, and realizes that Madakara really has reached his limit. He's disappointed, and determines that he will never be able to use Madakara to settle things with Senya. Marito's getting bored, so he tells Madakara to keep coming after him. He beats him down some more, so the disappointed Ichiya walks away from the pitiful fight, abandoning the now useless Madakara. Just then, Madakara declares that he doesn't want to do something anymore, and Ichiya stops walking away. Madakara explains that he doesn't want to live in fear of the monster anymore. He pulls himself up, and Ichiya becomes excited. Tension builds as Marito goes in to finish Madakara off, and Ichiya demands that Madakara say what he really wishes for. Madakara's mark begins to glow, and he wishes to be given immense power. Ichiya announces Bujigiri as the two of them merge, and Madakara shocks everyone when he stops Marito's attack. 
Madakara then lands a powerful kick and sends Morito flying. Everyone watching is stunned as Morito took a ton of damage from that one kick. Morito wants to fight more but finds that he can no longer walk. Madakara kicks Morito while he's down and Mahiro begs Madakara to stop as he ruthlessly pummels her brother. The brutally injured Morito finds that he can't move his body at all now and wonders if this is what losing feels like. Madakara is a completely different person now so he gives another ruthless stomp to Morito's face. Mahiro faints as she can no longer bear to watch and everyone else is left speechless. Ara is the most shocked of all and Madakara looks at him. Afterwards, a furious Ara demands that Senya come out and tell him what's happening to Madakara. He wants an answer, so Senya finally emerges. Thanks for watching my recap. Sign up to my free newsletter if you want to show some support to the channel. Link is in the description.